welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be assessing if you should go ahead and take the red pill, <laughs> that sounds nice, or swallow that blue pill whole. Now, for our uh, purposes today, these are both recreational meth, so we'll be doing them both. So you're probably here for one of three reasons. Reason A, well, you were drunk last night and this video popped up. Great. Uh, also reason A, well, you might have a problem with your older European style fused vehicles, like our old Volvo pig behind me. Well, it just keeps burning up the GBC ceramic tube torpedo style fuses. And you wanna fix that with gosh damn American ATC fuses. Well, they're probably American. It's American because it's in America. This is an ATC fuse, which stands for American Transatlantic Continental Breakfast. Probably. That's not what it means. But the ATO slash ATC fuse is, well, commonly referred to as a blade style fuse because it's got a pretty large surface area where the blade can actually dock into something and transfer electricity over and through it. And the real benefit of that is it can actually make contact on both sides of the blade. That's the issue with these European torpedo style, that if something happens on the little pinpoints on either side, corrosion, rust, corrosion, well, then there is no other side to make contact. So if you've got some melting fuses that aren't actually blowing, this is, we're gonna tackle that today. Well, whenever I crank the blower motor on this car all the way up to four, it shuts off like it's blowing a fuse. <laughs> and in a roundabout way, it did blow a fuse. Sort of, I mean, it melted. Task failed successfully. As you can see, well, the fuse element hasn't blown. Aw. But the plastic fuse body around it has started to melt. So of course on the day that the fuse melted, well, it was cold out. So I just slipped another one in there and when I put it in there, I spun it around. That's your first little trick to making these things work right. Since they only have two points of contact, one on each end, and depending on your style of fuse block, you can also pinch the little brass fingies together and that'll make it so it grabs the fuse tighter. Be warned though, that a lot of times when you pinch these, it'll actually end up trying to pop the fuse back out another direction. So take that tip with a grain of salt. It, that, just make sure it's snug in there, like a bug in a fuse. So let's go ahead and replace this fuse one more time and use our IR temperature gauge and let's see how hot this thing is actually getting. Sensual 81 degrees, okay, I like this. Oh, looks like we got our first degree, 82, 83, oh, 84, 83. Okay, going back down, oh, 80, 45, all right, 80, yeah, 88, I was born then, 86, oh, 84, 1984 was a good year, unrelated to the book. Uh, we broke into the 90s, and we broke into the early, oh god, 130, okay, hang on, let's go, I'm gonna get a, unplug this. Okay so, okay, so we stopped the testing at 136, it looked like I saw it before, um, turned it off, because it started to smell a little burning in here. So, let's, let's see what the fuse looks like. Pretty much like all the other fuses, a little crispy on the edges. But honestly, nothing too crazy and nothing that really hurt anything. Now you've got a couple different options here and I know some of the purists are gonna get mad, but I believe this is just a poor design. I know under the perfect circumstances, even a BMW can function, <laughs> I get it. But just, I, just swap it to an ATO, ATC style fuse. I like to use these little guys. They're a single fuse holder that can be mounted or just tucked away inside the kick panel of our cars. Now it features just two wires that we're gonna end up soldering on to the input and output brass connectors. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip one of the ends of our fuse holder wire, just a little shorter than the other, so that way they can lay over each other and not bulb us out. While there is a decent amount of space on our fuse panel, we don't wanna have a huge loop of wire bulging out in your face, you know? And shove it through the hole that the old fuse fit into. And then I'm gonna take my soldering iron and solder that bad girl in there. 
So unfortunately, to get the wire through the hole, I don't recommend tinning it or else it's just not gonna fit through the hole. But that means you've gotta balance your heat with your soldering iron on this space because these brass tabs sometimes mount to plastic. And if you get this brass tab hot enough, well, okay, you're gonna have two problems today. But if you just wanna avoid that entirely, you can always just clip the wires from the back of your circuit panel directly into your fuse holder. Now, sometimes that's easier said than done depending on the car's fuse layout and how it actually mounts in there. On the Volvo, you just remove the kick panel and cut them. On other cars, it might not be that. So don't do that. Once you've got your first wire soldered up, we're gonna go ahead and take this longer second wire and uh, arrange it in here nicely. And now we're gonna solder the second, even badder girl in. Now just to tidy this whole area up, I'm gonna wrap it with electrical tape. Remember, this is a crack home, not a crack house. And now that we've got this new fuse holder wired in, let's go ahead and test our connections. We're gonna use our same IR thermometer and scan it right in there on the actual metal pins itself. I went ahead and clipped off the little side bracket on our fuse holder because I'm not gonna be mounting this to anything. And then I'm just gonna tuck it into the kick panel for safe storage. Now I also wrapped a couple layers of electrical tape on the bottom of our wire here that would actually be possibly rubbing against this other terminal. Now if I'd actually been using my thinking cap, well, I would have just slid a little piece of adhesive heat shrink on there, called it good. But be careful if you've got anything rubbing on these parts. <laughs> that sounds awesome. But also it doesn't for your electrical system. That's more of an emotional, physical thing. And just for good measure, let's go ahead and make sure the trim panel still goes on. Oh yeah like a terrible fitting glove. So what did we learn today? <laughs> well, we learned that European garbage is just a different form and evolution of American garbage. And what do we say to American garbage companies? Thanks, Chevy. <laughs> I guess. And speaking of Chevrolet, here's the update about our 69 LS swap that you haven't asked for and I'm barely delivering now. Since we last spoke about it, I destroyed second gear. Just straight up trashed that ass. Nice. Oddly, I also trashed reverse. Not nice, that, that was an accident. So I've actually been very hard, ew, at work, even weirder, by just dropping this transmission off at Tick Performance to get rebuilt. So go ahead and get right on the edge of your seat because in one to two months, I'll give you an update video about that, maybe. But we are finishing the last phase of the sound deadening testing on this Volvo 240. We've already installed butyl rubber and foam and collected decibel readings for both. So be prepared for that video in probably less than a month. Maybe. I don't even know why you'd subscribe at this point because it's, maybe next year I'll do this one video about something and it might don't <laughs> do the thing. Maybe. I, don't, do whatever you want. I don't. It's fine. I'm getting too old for existing. Okay. Speaking of Chevrolet, it's time for a little update of our 69 B-Bops. Jesus, started just B-Boxing. 